Welcome to Microsoft Excel 2010. Microsoft Excel has gone through quite a few different changes. You still have the uh, typical tabs at the top like you do with the rest of the Office Suite. You've got Home, Insert, Page Layout. Your form layers are kept in a uh, separate tab now. You have a uh, specific tab for Data, Review, View, very common with all the products. I also have a Developers tab and a uh, Add-ins tab. Uh, just because I have Bluetooth on the computer that I'm working with and I also have a uh, an Acrobat tab as well because I have Acrobat Professional installed. So as you install different things you get different tabs that show up. I still have my Backstage so when I go to File there's my Backstage with my permissions, uh, my versions are here, um, I have a uh, list of my recent documents when I go to new, this is where I can create new workbooks, uh, new templates, as well as working with uh, different templates that are found at office.com. No longer do you actually have to go to office.com. You can actually pull the template uh, right from the program itself, and it will install it under my templates. When I go to print, this is my print preview. shows me uh, exactly what I'm working with, and all my different print settings are found here as well. When I go to Save and Send, um, again, uh, multiple features that uh, I, I have here. And a lot of these features are definitely shared um, amongst all of the, uh, the entire suite. Help is no different. Help shows up and uh, looks identical to the rest of the products. If I go to Home, though, inside my, uh, my Home tab here, I have Cut, Copy, and Paste. Um, my uh, conditional formatting is, uh, is found here as well, but uh, as I said, there have been uh, quite a few different changes. I want to show you a few. First thing I want to show you is this thing called Tables. You can now highlight a, uh, a bunch of text, and you have the ability to format it as a table. You have multiple different formats, but something happens. It just doesn't format it as a table. It actually does something else that you used to have in the old program, but you don't have it in this program, and that's a list. In the older version, you would go to Data, go down to List, and create a list. I can choose a, uh, a particular style of list. My table has uh, headings or headers. When I click OK, um, it may bug me about uh, any external ranges, so if I have outside links and things like that, it may tell me that uh, it's going to have to make it uh, static, which is fine. So I'll say yes, and it does a beautiful job. You get a very specific toolbar that uh, pops up. It's called Table Tools. It allows me to change to different styles. All I have to do is hover over top. When I hover over top, it, uh, it applies the change. It also gives the table a name so I can refer to that table when I'm programming. I can summarize the table with a uh, pivot table. All I have to do is click, select the table or range. As you can see, it's going to select table one, which is the one that uh, I'm working with. I can put it in a brand new worksheet. And when I click OK, it starts to build my pivot table. Now all I have to do is uh, just drag my, uh, my different values into different spots. And I can drag my currency in here. And this is account. I can change this, change the value settings, and even make this a sum. See, so lots of different features that uh, that you now have. You also get drop downs, so I can click the click the drop down and uh, be able to filter by country. I can also filter by color and do a, a custom sort so I can actually filter by different custom colors. You also have different text filters, which uh, allows you to uh, look for different things that either contain or begins with or ends with a certain word. You also have something else. It's called conditional formatting. With conditional formatting, I can uh, highlight a whole bunch of things, a whole bunch of numbers. There we go. And I can head to conditional formatting. I have lots of different uh, data bars, color styles, icon sets.
look at all the different icon sets. There's quite a few. Traffic lights. Loads. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to look at an icon set uh, than try and go through a list, trying to find a, a particular uh, number that you're looking for or certain threshold that you're watching for. Once you pick an icon set, you can head back to conditional formatting and manage those rules. When I manage the rules, I'm specifying when it turns green, when it turns yellow, when it turns red. There's, there's my rule, and all I have to do is edit the rule. I can format the cells based on their values. So when the cell value is greater than 67 or you know, less than a certain amount, um, and I can do it by percent. I can also do it by number. So I can choose number and say, well, you know, it's green when it's, uh, uh, it's, it's over one. And if it's less than, uh, I don't know, say 0.8, you know, then you, you can make it uh, whatever. When I click OK and click OK again, it, uh, it makes that change for me. So now I can easily see the different currencies that are less than a dollar. They're the ones marked red. So you have quite a few features with conditional formatting. It's quite a lot. You still have the typical things. I can go to insert and insert pivot tables and tables. I can insert pictures and clip art. You can still insert different shapes. When you insert the shapes, uh, things are a little bit different now. Um, it, uh, it doesn't look as goofy as it did before. If I choose a block arrow, for instance, all I have to do is click, drag out a block arrow, and now I get drawing tools. I can change the shape and the style and really make it look quite fancy. Apply different effects to it, reflections, 3D rotation. It doesn't take you long to get uh, pretty fancy with these. I can insert things like smart art. Uh, this is quite useful, very useful for PowerPoint, actually. Uh, if I go to cycle here, I can insert a basic cycle. I'll just move this over so uh, you can see this a little bit easier. I can choose from different layouts. I can change the colors of it, make it much more colorful, and then uh, be able to apply different uh, effects to it. This is my smart art tools. Your smart art tools has uh, two different tabs. One is design and the other is format. So I can pick on very specific um, bits in the diagram and uh, be able to actually format that one particular bit so it stands out or looks a little bit different. I can apply different fills and outlines and effects to it. Uh, my word art styles are here too and uh, my text styles as well. Some things haven't changed. Uh, for instance, formulas, they still start with an equals. If I type in the word sum, you now get a list of uh, the different formulas that begin with the word sum. So uh, hopefully you either get curious or it starts to jog the old memory. Uh, the moment that I use an opening bracket, uh, I can now sum the, uh, the formula. And it, it pretty much works the same as it always has. You know, I can sum from F1 to, uh, what is this, F51. Close my bracket, hit my enter key. So it still basically works the same, and uh, obviously these are, are uh, currency rates, but it's decided to format it as a date. Uh, but I can uh, show it as a, a sum or a number and still be able to, to format the cell. You can still right-click and format the cell. So I can have it as a date or have it as general or a number or currency. I'll format it as currency and I'll click OK. So you have a lot of different options, uh, and some of the options are still the same. As I said, formulas haven't changed, but there is now a tab. So my auto sum feature is here. My name manager. I also have formula auditing, so that uh, I can trace uh, different dependents, or I can trace different precedents.
I can remove the arrows. It basically helps you when you're trying to audit a spreadsheet and trying to figure out where the data's come from. I also have a tab for data. This is where your auto filter is turned on. You'll notice that uh, your headings up top uh, all have uh, auto filter. But you'll also notice that when you use a table and you scroll down, the, um, uh, the headings of the table kind of merge into the top portion here in the spreadsheet. So what you no longer have to do is freeze that, uh, that very first row anymore. It automatically gets frozen. I'll head back to insert. You have some new things. There's no question. Uh, line, column, win or loss. So uh, I can highlight uh, a set of numbers and use something like uh, win loss or uh, a line. And it's like a mini little chart that I can put in another cell. I can put this into G2 and then it uh, it shows me that uh, yes, you know, there's an increase and of course because I'm using a sparkline, I get different sparkline tools. I'll head to insert. Uh, you can also use slicers, which is used for uh, filtering. Uh, so that way I can uh, actually filter a, uh, a list uh, that I have. Um, I don't have any connections right now, but uh, I can definitely you know, create a, a connection here and, uh, and start working with slicers. Uh, text box hasn't changed. Same with header and footer. Uh, these things have, uh, have all pretty much uh, remained the same. Page layout, very, very similar to Word, uh, except here you have an uh, extra button to uh, print the titles as well as change or put something into the background. As I mentioned, formulas are here. They brought your name manager up front and center, so uh, you, you can actually use uh, proper names of uh, different fields. Your uh, data tab also brings a few other things kind of front and center. You can import uh, data from Access. You can import data from the web. So it actually goes out, grabs information from a, uh, a web page, and pulls it down. Could be text. You know, could be uh, from pretty much any other source that you can think of, to be honest. And that way, you can connect it to your spreadsheet and uh, have the information readily available. Your data validation tools are here. That really hasn't changed at all. Same with your what-if analysis, scenario manager, goal seek, and your data table uh, hasn't changed one bit. As I mentioned, uh, a lot of the products have review. This is where you protect your worksheet, uh, protect the whole workbook. Uh, I can also uh, share the whole workbook, but uh, the workbook has to exist on a network location that uh, people would have access to it. I can protect and share the workbook. Uh, speaking of share, because I have Microsoft Link installed, that's why I have this last feature. Whether it's a Word document, Excel, or PowerPoint, you can actually share documents and work on the same document together. I can also send the document through instant messaging, uh, which is actually quite useful because sometimes, uh, especially with presentations, the uh, file size can get a little bit large. View is where they stuck the macros. So if you are looking for your macros and looking to build macros, uh, in uh, Microsoft Excel 2010. Um, that's where the macro is. Now, interestingly enough, with the macros, if you have any previous macros with the previous versions, those macros will not run in 2010. Very simple ones will, but if you've written some very specific and complex macros, it's more than likely you won't be able to actually use them, and you'll have to re-record them or, uh, or retype out the uh, uh, the syntax. File hasn't changed. Info, recent. In info, you can protect the workbook. Market is final. Uh, I can restrict people from uh, editing it. And this is where I add my digital signature now. I can check it for issues. So this allows me to inspect the document, check it for accessibility. Uh, I can check it for compatibility for previous versions and see what's going to work and not work. I also have different versions here, and these are my uh, uh, workbooks that have been uh, recovered. My recent files, new we've talked about, as well as print, that hasn't changed. Save and send, this is where I get my help. And finally, if I click on options, these are some of the different program options. General, 
looks the same with the majority of the products. Uh, and then I have some very specific ones like for formatting or for formulas, proofing, saving, language, uh, advanced changes with uh, each one of them. I can customize the ribbon as we talked about before and I can uh, also customize my quick access toolbar. That has been Microsoft Excel 2010.